<laughs> Somebody said glory on that. <laughs> We're hiring if anybody's looking for a job tonight. <laughs> the pleasures of sin, no more I desire, no good in.
precious blood atoning, then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He saw me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him and all my Who 
stand to your feet. You feel like it today. <coughs> when my soul is singing in the promised land above, I'll be satisfied. Say good evening to everybody. Good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. And see the ones that's come to be with us tonight. It's such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. I couldn't think of anywhere else that I'd rather be at. And worshiping God with God's people. Amen. There's no better place to be. And uh, we're just a privilege, the honor to be here. If you're visiting with us, we welcome you. And you feel free to worship the Lord with us tonight. We've got... Uh, God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. He, he's still doing great things in our life. I don't, I don't deserve anything, but God's so good to me. And I bet you can say the same thing, that God's so good to you. And, and you look around, and the Lord's a lot better to you than Satan's ever been bad to you. I'll tell you that. We get hung up a lot of times, and we focus on what ain't went right. i tell you what, if you're saved tonight, something went right. Amen. Amen. You gave your heart to the Lord. And yes, the Bible said, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these other things to be added unto you. And so if you're saved tonight, you've got something to give God praise for. Amen. Amen. Not going to hell. Going to heaven one day. Amen. I thank Him tonight. Praise Him. Glad to have Brother Jason with us tonight. And it's been a while since Brother Jason's been able to be up with us. And, and it's just a blessing to have him and his wife with us and the folks that traveled up with him tonight. And we just want to, we just want to worship the Lord together. He's going to be preaching tonight, and we've been looking forward to this and and uh, praying. And if you're here and you don't know the Lord, you listen tonight. Yeah. And God may call your name, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if God calls your name, it's time to get saved, yeah. and we want you to be saved. We really do. Our hearts desire to see you know the Lord, and boy, we want to keep all these prayer requests in mind. The altar was filled up two or three times this morning, and that's. That's good, amen, that people would seek the Lord. And, and I believe we need to be seeking Him in this day and hour that we live in. At any time we could hear the voice of God. The trumpet could sound. Jesus could come. I pray you're ready, amen. And so uh, before we get into the service tonight, and we want to go to the Lord in prayer. And, and uh, we got so many tonight, we know that need help from God in some way or another. We've got... People in our church that are sick. We got family that's sick. We got friends that are sick. <clears throat> we got friends and family that's lost that we want to see saved. I believe somebody left here under conviction this morning. I pray God gives them another chance. He don't have to, but I pray He does. I pray He does. So 
Let's pray for them that left here uh, not listening to the voice of God. And let's pray for our nation. Our nation needs the Lord. Amen. From the White House to the courthouse, they need Jesus. And let's pray for our leaders of our country. Uh, maybe you've got a spoken prayer request tonight. You're welcome to. We'll help you pray. God bless. The Lord knows all about it. Amen. Somebody else. Just keep praying for land on the fifth of the level. Yeah, yeah. Level 94. Be 94 Wednesday. Be 94 Wednesday. The oldest living member, I guess, of our church. Been saved 74 years. Been saved 74 years. She's got a wonderful testimony. She sure does. Sister Zell does. Let's keep her in our prayers. Somebody else. Yeah, let's remember, Sister Kim. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> God bless. Remember, Sister Kim, Brother Dale's, they go bury Brother Dale's father up in Illinois. They need prayers for traveling mercies and prayers for that family. God bless. The Lord knows about it. Amen. Someone else? Always. God bless. Remember the churches I visited. Pray for our pastors. Don't have a pastor. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, remember uh, Miss Louise when you pray. Yeah. Pray. Yeah. And uh, let's pray for one another. We all grow stronger. Amen. Amen. That's where we need to be. Amen. 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 Remember also my brother in laws and remember a bunch of cousins. Yes. Lost, yes. God bless. God bless you, Brother Muncie. Amen. Let's remember these. Somebody else. Yes. God bless. Let's remember this. Someone else. Mm. There's so many that get in that shape, and you don't know until you've got family or friends close to you that's in that shape. Just what it can do. Let's lift them up to the Lord. God can break every chain. Do you know that? Amen. There ain't nothing tying you down what God can't make you free of. Amen. He said, So the Son makes Amen. free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad it's that way. Let's remember this tonight. Somebody else. <clears throat> Amen. You know, let's remember Brother Carson, Brother Jeff's mother. It's hard when you can't really do nothing to help them, but just pray and be with them. But let's remember them tonight. Remember Brenda and Jeff. They're the ones taking care of her right now. Yeah. Our family's done really good about keeping her out of the nursing home. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard on them right now. Yeah. Let's remember. Let's remember them tonight. Someone else. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless you, Sister Kim. Amen. <clears throat> you know the Bible tells us to bear one another's burdens. Lift one another up to the Lord. Amen. I'm glad that we get burdened because if we didn't, that means we didn't care. But when Jesus comes in, love comes in. Love for the brother. How do you know you pass from death unto life? You got love for the brother. Amen. And you get the you get the burden for them and you get praying for them. And we'll help you pray, Sister Kim. I 
I want to see all of you that's got family that's lost. I want to see them saved. I really do. I don't just say that. I mean that. Do you mean that? Do you mean you want to see people? I mean with everything in it. They just knew what we knew about peace. They just knew what we knew about joy, unspeakable and full of glory. They just could realize that tonight. What a change it would make. <clears throat> but I can't give it to them, but I serve a God's got plenty to give out. Amen. He can give it to them. Let's pray tonight. Somebody else. I want you to lift up Brother Jason as he comes to preach tonight. And I appreciate him. Me and him got acquainted several years ago. And, and we've been in a lot of services together. And I, I just thank God for him and the, and the way the Lord's using him in the ministry. And you pray for his church down there where he's pastoring at, that God would just bless them. Send souls in to be saved every Sunday. I, I know they still have folks down there that need the Lord just like they are up here, brother. And, and uh, let's lift him up to the Lord tonight. Anybody that's come to sing, let's lift them up to the Lord. And let's pray one for another. Maybe you got an unspoken but lifted hand. Altars open. We encourage you to come. Invite you to come if you'd like to come and pray tonight. Let's gather around the altar and take these needs unto the Lord. I'm going to ask Brother Ronnie if he wouldn't mind. How to come and start us in prayer. Lord, we come thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Lord, we thank you for being present. God, we pray for each need to be here tonight. We resist the same day of the Lord. God, you're a prayer to please your Christ. There's a lot of people. We pray for God to bless them, to pray. draw them so many to you, God, to where it's too late. We pray for those who hung up on drugs, whatever problem oh, they have, that you just speak to them, <coughs> help them to realize that there's another life, and that life with drugs. Lord, we pray for each request for death is in our hands. We pray for something there. We pray that you would bless this service tonight. Thank you for the service this morning. Yes, Lord. Bless abundantly. Thank you, God. We come thanking you for that. Yes, we pray Lord. for those that passed out of this building this morning yes. that maybe was lost. Yes. Uh, oh, God. We're here tonight. We pray you speak to them and draw them to you before it's too late. Yes, Lord. Uh, be with Brother Cornbread tonight. Yes, Lord. Pray your word. Just yes, Lord. Jesus. Come on in. Yes, God. Uh, he's never preached before. We yes, thank you, Lord, Lord, that he's come this Bless way. You, thank you for those that have come with him. Yes, thank Lord. you for them. Thank you, God. Lord, just bless this part of the service. If they be singing for the service, we we'll pray that you'll be with them and bless yes, them. Lord. And bless our country, our leaders. Lord, and yes, them. Thank you, God, we pray. Thank you for the beautiful way. Thank you for the beautiful way. Thank you for your love for me. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Once, one day <coughs> we was lost, and you yes. spoke and gave yes. us an opportunity to accept you before it was too late. Yes, Lord. Forgive us where we have failed, but yes, we come short of your glory. Yes. For it's in Christ's name we ask yes. you for a Jesus. Amen. 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 <coughs> Thank you, Brother Ron. <coughs> Spencer boys wasn't able to be able to be here tonight, but uh, we uh, we appreciate uh, we appreciate them thinking about us. Maybe they'll make it up our way soon. We'd love to have them boys just whenever they can, and they stay busy singing for the Lord, and that's a good thing. Amen. And you pray for them and their ministry. Who come with a song on their heart tonight? In other words, Kaylee, you gonna sing? <laughs> Bless you, Lord. We don't call nobody out of here, by the way. I was looking, I thought somebody was going to be right. God is still good. God is still good. That's right. As I look back on all of my days, so many All I can say is God is still good. Amen. Sometimes night brings sorrow and pain. Sometimes my tears fall like rain. But through it all, He's never changed. God is still good.
Everybody's up here humming, so surely they more than me got a song. Uh, <laughs> well, every now and then you'll go through a dry spell and it's your own fault. Uh, and then there's times that the Lord won't let you rest. <laughs> I'm thankful that when he was on the cross, he had the power to look forward and backward and call in his remembrance. Each and every one of us sitting here. And he knew when he was hanging on the cross and he became my sin. As a young boy, he came to me at Sand Springs Baptist Church and offered me the opportunity of salvation. And while he was hanging there, he knew that I'd fail him. But he still forgave me. Oh, All my sins that I had committed and those that I would commit. Yeah. The Father sent his son for a sacrifice to be. He
If you do, help me remember it. High up on a mountain from where he descended, an angel of the Lord declared that it would be. He said, don't stand here grieving for the Lord.
Chapter 53 said, Whom hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Amen. Amen. I believe the report. How about you? (laughs) I believe. I believe the report. Nahum chapter 3 and verse 7 said, The Lord is good, of stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trusteth in him. Why do you trust him, preacher? Because I believe the report. Amen. I know about who he's talking about. I know that Jesus is who He says He is. Amen. And He's my personal Savior. And if you're saved, He's your personal Savior. I'm glad He works that way. I'm glad we can have a relationship with Him that way. And uh, if you've never been one-on-one with God, tonight's a good night. Amen. Amen. To be one-on-one with Him. So thank God for the good singing tonight. Thank God for the good worship and fellowship together. If you're visiting with us, you feel free to worship the Lord. The altar's always open here. It'll be open until the Lord comes back. Amen. 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 You come and pray. You ain't going to hinder Brother Jason as he's preaching. You ain't going to bother him. If you need to come and pray, you come and pray. Anytime during the service. The invitation is not in a song, friend. It's when God calls. Amen. We sing during the invitation. We do, and I'm glad that we do. But the invitation is when God knocks at your heart. That's the time to be saved. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. You pray for Brother Jason as he comes and preaches to us tonight. Give him a good hand if you will. Praise the Lord. Glad you're saved. Amen. Amen. Good looking bunch. Amen. Size a couple of you. It ain't no sacred. Everybody acts like it's a sacred when they're ugly. They know. Everybody, it's like being big. Okay. Let me figure this thing out. Boy, I'm glad to be here tonight. Amen. Get this turned on there. There we go. She's green. And I love you and appreciate you. Love your pastor tonight. Appreciate everybody that's come to be with us. Uh, and uh, all the visitors got a... A dear friend and his his precious family yeah. uh, drove over here tonight, and uh, Brother Jerry and his precious wife. Thank God for them. Uh, love Brother Jerry, very yeah. very talented man in the Bible, yeah. and uh, he'll uh, he'll surprise you. you just <laughs> talking to him, and I'm sure he he's uh, feels unworthy Bless as I Lord. speak of him in that manner, but I mean it. And uh, 
Um, so a couple of nice, uh, some of our friends rode over with us tonight. Hey, uh, uh, Brother Matthew Yoder. <laughs> Look at it. Oh, uh, I said I told somebody I was in revival a, a few weeks ago, and Brother Matthew was uh, uh, sitting in the back, and the pastor said, "Well, who's that?" I said, "Well, it's a Mennonite." I said, I led him to the Lord the other day. He just uh, caught him right in the middle of a barn raising. And I said, told him about Jesus. He said, that, I said, whenever I got to the burden is light, he's like, I'm in. <laughs> so we love Brother Matthew. Amen. I'm glad to be saved tonight. Man, there's a lot of things I could be, but I'm glad that the Lord spoke to me back in 2004. And I want to say this, if you're not saved, you can be. And I'm glad tonight that it doesn't take any kind of special uh, itinerary or any kind of special maybe uh, instructions. I'm glad that... I serve a God that needs no introduction yeah, this evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to know my Lord and Savior in that, my dear friend. Uh, uh, God just bankrupt heaven in that to come down here and to uh, seek and to save that yeah, which was lost in that. Uh, he didn't come in that to build a reputation for himself. Uh, he didn't have all the reputation he needed. Uh, I mean, listen, in that, my dear friend, I want you to know uh, uh, that whenever uh, uh, he walked on this earth in his earthly ministry, uh, uh, people stood in that. And I thought about what Nicodemus uh, in that said over there, he come to him of a night. Uh, and he began, the Lord began to tell him about uh, uh, just what he needed to do and how he needed to be born again. Uh, and I want you to know tonight you still need to be born again. Amen. Uh, uh, listen, without the Lord, uh, uh, you're as lost as a ball in high grass uh, and you're headed in that to hell uh, and you see old Nicodemus being a man that he was uh, uh, he was a master of the law uh, uh, he sat there and began to marvel uh, at what the Lord said uh, uh, you know tonight whenever you marvel at something you stand in awe uh, that's what it means uh, my Lord and Savior looked at him uh, and said marvel not uh, uh, listen you shouldn't be here tonight uh, and say to yourself, uh, uh, why do I need to be saved? Uh, you shouldn't stand in awe of that notion. Uh, I'll tell you why you need to be saved. Uh, uh, because my dear friends, uh, we had a Savior. Uh, I mean, if He didn't need a Savior, God wouldn't have sent Him. Uh, if He hung between the heavens and the earth, uh, uh, He gave it all on the old cross uh, in that with Calvary. Uh, I mean, He come down here uh, and the Jews were expecting and a king. And listen, he come in the order of Melchizedek, no doubt. And not only was he a high priest, but he was a king. But listen, he didn't come in the way of a king that they expected. They expected somebody to unrelease that Roman grip to sit on the throne of David. I want you to know in Matthew or in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah seen the, in that the glory of the Lord in chapter 53 he seen the suffering of the Lord on Daniel prophesied of 70 weeks and he even said at the end of the book there's some things I don't understand you see my friend between weeks 69 and 70 there's a period in that and it's a church period I thank God in Romans 10 it says for there's no difference between two or three uh, for the same Lord over all uh, is rich unto those that call upon Him. Uh, uh, how could they call uh, if they haven't believed? Uh, how could they believe uh, if they haven't heard? Uh, how could they hear uh, without a preacher? Uh, uh, how could He preach uh, lest He be sealed? Uh, I'm here tonight to tell you uh, that faith uh, would come by hearing uh, and hearing the Word of God. Uh, uh, you see, my dear friends, uh, uh, there's a time uh, a stretch of time uh, that God set aside. Uh, uh, listen, uh, that the Gentiles, uh, uh, the Jews, uh, uh, the big, uh, uh, the small, uh, the black, uh, 
the wife, the yeah. Rahab, the yeah. shower, yeah. the incompetent, yeah. all, yeah. everybody yeah. could be saved. Yeah. And now's the time. Yeah. Today's the day. Yeah. You hear his voice. I'm not your heart. I'm telling you, he died for you. And listen, went all the way to Calvary. He got beat. I like what old Paul said over there in Galatians. He said the gospel was preached unto Abraham. And no doubt it was preached to him through his son, Isaac. The first thing was a supernatural birth. Abraham was a hundred. Listen, and the Lord come by a virgin. And then there's a sacrificial death. I want you to know in that, my dear friends, whenever Abraham headed up that hill the first time, you'll ever see the mention of worship and love in the Bible is in Genesis 22. But when Abraham and Isaac headed up that hill, you see, I believe the very moment that God come to him, Abraham killed him. He listened and he said they headed up a hill three days. I want you to know they got to a point whenever they had that old donkey there. Now listen. Well, glory to God. I want you to know in the Old Testament. Well, isn't that my dear friends? If you had no donkey, now listen, and you wanted him to live, a lamb had to die for him. I want you to know every time that donkey went to the city, now listen, everybody know that a lamb died for him. I'm telling you, I'm going to a city one of these days. Now listen, the angels don't know about it. They clear into it. They don't know about the salvation of the Lord. But hurry, I'm going. And they're going to say, I am that died for him. Amen. Oh, Lord. I'm telling you, oh, Abraham, he got the bottom of that hill. He took the wood, which represents sin, and put it on his son. They headed to the top. I said, hallelujah, as he making his way up there, God prepared a sacrifice. My dear friends, listen, as Abraham and Isaac made their way up the mountain, God sent a little lamb on the other side. It was such a picture in that of my Lord. Listen, even it was caught in the thicket. What do you mean, preacher? What was on my Lord's head? A crown of thorns. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, my dear friends, them boys got up there and worshipped because God had supplied a sacrifice. Yes, sir. But it gets better. Yeah. It gets better. You never read of Isaac again. When they come, when they come off that mountain, all you read of is Abraham. Right. You never read of Isaac again until he comes out to get his bride. Right. Amen. 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 Right. Yes, right. We might as well just stand at fire. <laughs> Amen. 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 The gospel was preached to Abraham. Yes, sir. There's a period of time in old Jews. The Lord said. He taught them three parables over there. And he said the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to put this somewhere. I look like an assistant manager at Kroger now. <laughs> but the Lord said, I do, that's why y'all laughing. <laughs> the cantaloupes are over there. <laughs> I got to smile. But <laughs> you see, my friend, the Lord, whenever kingdom of heaven's mentioned in the Bible, that's talking about the millennial kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Or it's talking about my Lord. Whenever John the Baptist said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, really means the king's right here. Right. He's right. at hand. Yeah. And uh, you think about God don't make no mistakes, and I could get into all yeah. that. But he said there was a field. Yeah. That fills the world. Yeah. And in that field, there's a great treasure. Right. Yeah. And that treasure is the nation of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. See, whenever God made this place, He highlighted that little country, those poor Amen. people. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever He seen them, 
And they begin to not deny him. He's still on the Mount of Olives and way up. He said, oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem. That's right. Yes, sir. They didn't get it, did they? That's right. Paul said in Romans they were blinded. Yeah. Yeah. But really and truly, the church is blinded of the majesty and the beauty of Israel. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's it right. is. Yeah. Right. And what's it say he done? It said he took that and he hid it back. Yeah. And sold all that he had. Yeah. For the whole stinking field. Amen. Right. Yeah. Do you know yeah. I'm in that field? Yeah. You're yeah. in that field. Yeah. 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 And because of what he done, we can be part of a local New Testament That's right. visible church. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes, Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's right, I was preaching down at Spring City, Tennessee a few weeks ago. I'm going to read this thought. Be turned to the book of Revelation, chapter 2, and the, and the book of Ephesians. I'm going to be quick. <coughs> I was preaching meeting down in Spring City, Tennessee. Brother Tim Giddens, um, if you never got a chance to listen to him preach, great man of God. Uh, he's uh, something else. Uh, but anyway, it's coming back, and I begin to, where I'm pastoring at, we're going through the book of Ephesians. <coughs> and uh, I preached all that about salvation and. Uh, the field and, and Israel because you need to understand everybody's place and their purpose. Because you have a duty, church. That's right. You hear me? You've got Amen. a job. That's right. And it's not here. Yep. Amen. Yep. You study in the Bible how many times the Lord wants somebody to Him in a temple yep. or in a synagogue. You won't read of it much. Right. You want to know why? It's our job's out there. Amen. Amen. In fact, I don't think it's ever the intentions of God, and I thank God that He can work in a church house and save people. Yeah. Yeah. But if a church is doing what they're supposed to, they'll leave these doors, they'll win people to Christ, and bring them back. Amen. The preacher will baptize them in, and there'll be a... Listen, and you'll train them up the way they should go. Yeah. And they'll work and they'll go do the same. Amen. Yeah. We've Amen. got it backwards. Right. We think that the 100 people need to get saved in church, and I wish they would. They can yeah. get saved yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Amen. Faith Amen. and repentance is all it takes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I wish they would. Yeah. But really, truly, as a Christian... And that word's used loosely as a saved person. My job, this is my reward for working for the weak. This ain't my job, honey. You hear me? My job is outside these doors. Because there's people that depend on me to show them just this. The gospel was preached unto Abraham. The lost and dying world listen, needs preached to. And I want you to know the way God set it up in this dispensation as we would go further into it. The pull and the draw to the church is going to get close and close. And the pull and the draw to the Jews. Israel as a nation's going to get bigger and bigger. Uh, uh, listen, uh, everybody reads over in Matthew 24 and 25, uh, and they try to pin that towards the end of the days uh, into the church age. It's not. Uh, that's a millennial thing there. Uh, listen, there's always wars and rumors of wars. Uh, listen, there's always earthquakes in divers places. Uh, I mean, tell the people that went through World War I. Uh, uh, listen, it's always been that way. Uh, I'm telling you, 1948, uh, whenever it is will become a nation. My dear friend, that was the beginning of the end. And Paul said this. He said, if you wanted to look for the coming of the Lord, you'd first see a great falling away. Boys, ain't we there? I mean, COVID hit. Ain't nobody cares for more. People's living however. They call themselves saved. They call themselves this and that. But they don't care about church. I believe the writer in Hebrews said, forsake not the 
them and of yourselves yeah. together. And it goes on later in that verse. It says to do it much more as we see the day approaching. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, he's coming back. Yeah. And listen, you don't want to be here one second after the church is gone. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to be here one minute after it's gone. Yeah. Because it's going to get bad. Yeah. And listen, the Bible says that God, once the church is gone, he's going to send a strong delusion. And listen, people ain't going to go into it. They're not going to wonder how come all these people's gone. And that whole seven years is going to be for one reason and one reason only. That's that the nation of Israel will be saved. Amen. And the Bible says they'll be saved in one day. You see, and that's the way he set it up. But he set up these churches and we're in the book of Revelation this evening. And I'm going to try to hurry. I took more time. Reach on, brother. Uh, but uh, I'll just be honest with you. I drove a long way. Well, Yoder drove. He gets stomach. He car sick. He told us, I, get, I said, well, you're going to drive. <laughs> he, didn't know, he didn't know our horse and buggies had gas pedals. <laughs> <laughs> no. <he's not. laughs> that was funny about the burden, wasn't it? As soon as I got to the burden's line, I'm in. <laughs> I want to write that down. <coughs> but he's left. Letterbox Baptist Church as a local, visible, New Testament church. In the book of Ephesians, if you read the way Paul wrote that, he said, in some places he said to you, Meaning the church at Ephesus. Yeah. And then in some places he said to us. Right. So that tells me not only is there a local visible body, yeah. then there's our brothers and sisters yeah, in Christ. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm from Monticello. Yeah. And it's a rare thing for people to get saved down there, but I did. <laughs> and I'm your Amen. brother and sister in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You see, but I'm a member of Green Hill Baptist Church. Yeah. That's my local visible. And I have to explain that to, so you can get the message tonight. <coughs> but there's something that happened at Ephesus. Now, from a biblical standpoint, these seven letters to the churches is history. Down through timeline, at the cross of Calvary will start the first one, and at the end will be the Laodiceans. Yeah. And you look how history's laid out. We're right there in Laodicea. Right. Right. And at the end of that one, the Lord said, Behold, I stand at the door knocking. Everybody yeah. thinks that's an invitation. It's not. Right. It's the Lord wanting back in the church. Amen. Yeah. yeah. That's right, brother. It's what it is. Yeah. But here at Ephesus, we see a few things about them. Of course, you can go read in Acts 18, 19, 20 about Ephesus and when Paul went to them. But if you'll stand just to read a little bit. <coughs> Revelation chapter 2. And we're going to be in the book of Ephesians. And I'm going to try my best to hurry for you tonight. <coughs> Verse 1. This is what the Bible says in, in Revelation chapter 2. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things. Saith he... Uh, holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Boy, that's a good thing, ain't it? Amen. <coughs> and how thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and have found them liars. That's a good thing. And has borne their patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Yeah. Boy, how'd you like the Lord to say that about you? Amen. For yeah. my name's sake you labored yeah. and not fainted. <coughs> and then in verse 4, this is where the problem gets. Here comes that old negative. Nevertheless, yeah. I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the works or else I will come unto thee quickly and I will remove thy candlestick out of its place except thou repent. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you again for another day. I ask you to forgive us. I pray that you'd search among your people. I pray, dear Lord God, that if there's anybody here tonight lost, I pray that you'd save them. I pray that you'd save or help the one that's backslidden, dear Lord. Help the preacher and his family. 
Bless them as they come and go. Dear Lord, I thank you for the good fellowship and the good singing. I pray that you make us quick and I pray that you make it easy tonight. Open our hearts, dear Lord. These saints ask in the name of Jesus and God's people say, Amen. Amen. May be seated. Amen. So we see the church of Ephesus. <laughs> and the church of Ephesus is one of the very few churches in the Bible, in the epistles, where you can see the beginning. Yeah. You can see the works and you can see the end of it. Yeah. You see, if you look historically, around 100 A.D., the church of Ephesus closed its doors. Yeah. It's not on the map anymore. Something must have happened. Right. I mean, I don't know if you've ever read the book of Ephesians or not, but my friend Paul laid out some good doctrine about yeah. the body of Christ. That's right. I mean, he had some good words to say to those people. I, I thought about what he told the Corinthians there. At the end of chapter 2 of the book of 1 Corinthians, he began to explain man. He said, there's a natural man. Now listen, that's somebody not saved. He said, there's a spiritual man yet somebody that's saved. And listen, and they are living for the Lord. They're doing right. They're studying, doing what they're supposed to. And at the beginning, of chapter 3, he said, but ye are carnal. You see, that's somebody that's saved. And my friends, they in that, they couldn't listen, have any milk or any meat, because Paul said they were on the milk. And if you'll notice at the first of the book of Corinthians, Paul said, I didn't come to you. And it ties some words of man's wisdom. But in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, you see, right before he went into Corinth, he stood on Mars hill uh, and preached. He said I couldn't be with you eloquently. Uh, I mean he preached one of the most uh, uh, beautiful laid out messages right before he went into Corinth. Uh, yeah. What changed? Uh, you see they were carnal. Uh, I'm telling you tonight uh, there's a lot of people that's in the house of God uh, and they're carnal. Uh, uh, they can't handle the meat. Uh, uh, they can't handle the preached word yeah. of God. Uh, uh, they wouldn't know worship if it melted down and poured all over them. Uh, uh, and that's how come our people uh, are dying and going to hell. Yeah. I'm telling you tonight, uh, uh, listen, this ain't some kind of party time. Uh, uh, this ain't some kind of carnival. Uh, I'm telling you, this is real deal business. Yeah. Uh, and the very moment uh, that you lose concern over your lost loved ones uh, is the very moment uh, that you'll be in the same place uh, that they yeah. was at Ephesus. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling yeah. you, my yeah. friends, uh, them old people over there, Corinth, may have been carnal, uh, but at least in that, my dear friend, they knew what they was. You see over here, we evidently seen the doctrinal shift because Paul said this in that to Timothy. He said, and I besought thee that abide still were in Ephesus. He said, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. You see, the false doctrine was making its way in. People, I'm telling you, people in today's time, in today's church, they don't don't study enough of the Bible in that. And I'll tell you what you'll do. You'll get carried off with every sound, every wind, every doctrine. I'm telling you tonight, you ought to know why you're Baptist. You ought to know why you read the King James Version of the Bible. You ought to be convicted about what you believe. Listen, I know we're in a time when they've got Jesus planted up as some kind of lip-wristed hippie that come out of Los Angeles. I'm telling you, he's a manly man. And listen, they say, I had somebody say the other day, I wonder what he's going to look like when he comes back. I wonder what he's going to dress like. I promise you this, he won't go to the mall and do him up a full hawk in skinny jeans. If they just study the Bible, they know what he's going to be wearing when he comes back. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, if you ain't covered all about the Baptist church, the same thing will happen here. Happened in Ephesus. Oh, that's right. That's right. He said, Don't preach no other doctrine. That's right. And Paul said, You stay there. Amen. And next verse, he says, Neither give heed to fables or endless genealogies which minister questions. Yeah. Uh huh. I know. I, was, I didn't tell you where that was. I'm sorry. Rather than God the edifying which is in faith, so do. That's in 1 Timothy. One, three, and four. That's what yes. Paul said about Ephesus. Yes. 
Paul, you know what Paul said about Timothy? He said, there's no other man like him. Yeah. He said, I, he said, I, I trust him. Yeah. If I, listen, naturally speaking, if I could have anybody's trust, I'd want to be Paul. Yeah, right. Yeah. And if Paul told Timothy, you better get down there and warn them, there must have been something going on, right? That's right. Yep. <coughs> so what happened? Well, all the things here and, and the revelation, let's see this. The first thing we see is their practice. Yeah. Revelation 2, chapter 2, verse 2. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst bear them which are evil, and how thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. That's Amen. pretty good practice, ain't it? Amen. You know something, Later Box Baptist Church? I'm sure your pastor is the same way. I know I'm good enough to know that. I'm sure you know when somebody's false or not. Right. I'm sure you've been in it long enough to understand yeah. that. Yeah. So their practice wasn't their problem, was it? Right. Yeah. We also see their performance yeah. in verse 3. And has borne and has patience. And for, the, for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. Yeah. Yeah. I, as I was studying this, I thought about you all. Yeah. How you're not afraid to worship. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. But I'm just going to tell you something, church, and I'm not going to try to be rude or ugly. You can shout till you can't. If you don't love your neighbor, it ain't worth a dime. Amen. Huh? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you ain't out trying to win them for the Lord, you just might as well keep your mouth shut. And you might as well not say a word because it won't make it to the ceiling. I'm telling you, I'd rather be in a bunch of dead cold people that knows how to work for the Lord Jesus and a bunch that run the aisles and ain't got a clue what's going on. Most of the time, those people are outside telling dirty jokes and living any kind of old way. It don't bother them. I'm telling you, you, uh, my dear friend, your performance uh, and your practice matters. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, uh, I want you to know we see uh, uh, the problem. Amen. Yeah. We Amen. also see the problem. That's right. First, we see the product of their practice and their performance. <coughs> Excuse me. It says right here at the end. Of uh, verse 3. And for my name's sake. Has labored and has not fainted. Oh I'm sorry. Verse 2. Uh, the second line here. And thy patience. And how thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them. Which say they are apostles and are not. And found them liars. Yeah. You see that's the product. Of their practice and their performance. In Letterbox Baptist Church. You can do the same. You can have that. Yeah. You can go through the motions. You've got one of the best. I mean, my goodness. How much talent was just up here? <coughs> How much talent? There's an old boy over at Carter Ridge, brother. Owens. Owens Construction. You know what I'm talking about? They built all these Don Frank. That cat play piano. I'd love to see you too. I don't know. Get you one of them black jackets and funny tails. <laughs> but I've seen a lot of places that's got talent like a piano player. Yeah. But there ain't many places got a whole stage full. Yeah. There ain't many places got a whole stage full and can sing. Right. There ain't many places that can shout worship like you do. Yeah. But seeing all that's good and all that's well, but if you ain't careful, you'll get a problem. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's true. Amen. Amen. You'll have a problem. Yeah. And it'll be a problem quick. Yeah. And we find their problem here. Yeah. <coughs> Verse 4. Yeah. And after we read this, go ahead, we turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Nevertheless, right. I have somewhat against thee. Now, this is the Lord talking. That's right. Yeah. Because thou hast left thy first love. Amen. 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 Worship, and that's what we're made to do, by the way. Right. Paul said, told the Thessalonians that we're three parts. He's a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the 
Spirit. Right. And He does stuff in triune. He does. Yeah. The, the human body is triune. Yeah. Paul said that we're spirit, soul, and body. Right. This body ain't worth a damn or ain't worth a, a dime because of uh, right. um, Adam's get you more, my goodness, Adam's nature. The Adamic nature. Right. That's what I was yeah. trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he uh, messed up, and as soon as he messed up, his spirit, right. which is the communication with God, yeah. was disconnected. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Paul said, I was alive without the law. Once the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. died. Right. You Amen. see, your soul is already dead. Yeah. Right. Your soul, or your body is already dead. Yeah. And it's destined for the dust. Right. Your soul is your will. Yeah. It's your nature. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You see, you want no difference between whenever I got saved and whenever I was lost? I, listen, I had a will to come up here tonight. Right. It was in my will. Yeah. And it was my, it's my nature to serve the Lord. Right. Because right. the Spirit is connected. And Paul said, I've been circumcised with a circumcision out of man's hands. That's right. how come it says, grieve not the Holy Spirit That's because right. you're sealed to the day of redemption. You see, whenever you get saved in that, uh, the Holy Spirit gets in that. Uh, it yeah. circumcises the flesh uh, away from your soul uh, and it yeah. seals the body. Uh, and that, my friends, I want you to know something. Uh, your soul, uh, your will, it changes. Uh, and it because the communication is reconnected with God. Amen. Amen. And that's how we know what to do. That's right. That's how we know what's right. That's how we know what's wrong. Amen. The Holy Ghost will go to the throne. Yeah. It says in chapter 8, look, Romans, here we know, don't know what to pray for. He'll go make intercession right. for them. Amen. Amen. And then it'll come back down. It'll get yeah. in our soul. Our soul has doors. Yeah. And then it'll go and knock on it. Say, let right. it in. Right. Really. You've yeah. got something hid there. That word iniquity starts with I N. It's in here. Yeah. And what happens to us is we let that take over. Amen. And we lose and we forget our first love. Right. Right. It's not worship. It's not tithing. All that's good. You need to. You better do it. Bless it's not coming here. It's not not cursing or not uh, skipping church. It, that's not your first love. Your first love should be a lost and dying world. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You're right, brother. Because yeah. that was Jesus Christ's passion. Amen. Amen. That was what he was sent here to do. Yeah. These folks, and we're going to read some things. <coughs> These folks had the practice, they had the performance. Yeah. We've seen the product of both. Yeah. But listen, they had a problem. Right. And I'm telling you tonight, Letterbox Baptist Church, if you're not careful, yeah. you'll have the same thing happen. What happened? They forgot a few things. Amen. They forgot a few things that Paul clearly told about. Let's read about them. <coughs> For Ephesians chapter 1. This is what the Bible says. Bless him, Lord. Verse 4. It says, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. Thank God for that. Amen. Yeah. God stepped out on nothing and said, we need the earth. Amen. And then He said, that, it was, what Jesus done on Calvary wasn't a salvage act. It wasn't a plan B. Right. It was before the foundation That's of the right. world. Amen. He was mentioned up there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You see, these people forgot a few things. They forgot, first of all, what God had determined. Now, listen Amen. to this. According as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him and in love, and having predestinated us unto the adoptions of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. Amen. We see that word predestination. Them old Calvinists took that and they ruined it for us, didn't they? That's just like the Pentecostal and anointed. They've taken and ruined it. Yeah. But predestination is simply this. Yeah. If there was a flight going from Atlanta to Las Vegas, and I know that's a bad place to go, and you needed to be in Las Vegas, that was done predetermined. Yeah. All you got to do is go get on the plane. That's right. 
Yeah. It don't matter if you get on or not. We're still going to glory. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Amen. Sir. There's some things yeah. that God determined. Yeah. Yeah. And the church of Ephesus had forgot about. Yeah. Right. I believe our local New Testament churches have forgot some things that God has determined in that yeah. time. I'm yeah. telling you, not only did He determine our destination, yeah. but He determined who could get saved and who couldn't. Yeah. I'm glad it says that whosoever yeah. call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. I, I believe, I believe yeah. the word, and there's one word in the Bible with more bearing than any other word, yeah. and it's found in the book of John chapter 3. Yeah. It says for God, a soul. I believe that word soul, oh, yeah. there's more bearing on that. He loved the world. He loved all of us. I'm telling you tonight we forget as a church what God has determined God set this up He knows exactly what is going to happen He's yes, more sir. up to date than the tomorrow news He knows when it's going to end yeah. He ain't suddenly going to get fed up and say I'm done with it I'm telling you it's determined That's and right. don't you forget it a Letterbox Baptist Church yeah. if He determined that His passion was to win lost folks you need to make your mind up tonight. I don't care who's with me. I don't care who's against me. I don't care if my wife's going. I don't care if my neighbor's going. I'm going to go. I'm going to knock on doors. I'm going to go see the local drunk. I'm going to go see the atheist. I'm going to go visit the homosexuals. You say and that, my dear friends, why would you do that? Because, listen, my Savior died for him. Yeah. on the cross of Calvary yeah. and on that cross yeah. he fulfilled the law yeah. I'm telling you my friends listen in the part of the law there was a trespass offering in case on that day of atonement it only come around once a year but if you was to mess up between the day of atonement and this year and next you could give a trespass offering my savior was my trespass offering yeah. I'm telling you when he saved me he saved me to the uttermost he saved me completely. He didn't leave one part behind. And he determined that not only it's for me, but it's for you and you and you. And one of these days, I'm telling you, I'm going to a land that's far better than this. I'm going to a place that's way better than this. I'm going to drop this robe of flesh and have a glorified body. I say hallelujah. But most of all, I'm going to be in the family of God. I'm waiting to adopt you. Hey Amen. There's only three ways to get in the family. You're either born in, you're married in, or you're adopted. I thank God in September of 2004, I was born in. On that same morning, I took some wedding vows. Do you take this man to be your wedded husband? I say hallelujah, yeah. And one of these days, when he comes, on the clouds of glory, and again his church, uh, listen, uh, in the moment uh, of a twinkling of an eye, uh, I'm going to drop this robe of flesh uh, and I'm going to go be with Him. Uh, and listen, uh, I'm going to stand in the judgment seat of Christ uh, and then we're coming back uh, and we're going to rule uh, with a rod of iron. Uh, I say hallelujah. Uh, and during those thousand years, uh, the curse will be lifted uh, off the earth. Uh, we won't have to earn our living uh, by the sweat of our brow. Uh, but listen, uh, it's coming a day far better than than that. I'm telling you oh John said I see a new heaven and a new earth. That's when the tears will get wiped away. And God has determined every bit of it. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. He's determined it. Amen. Don't forget it. That's right. Not only that for us to get to that destination that is determined yeah He's gave us a down payment. Amen. Amen. And don't you forget it. That's right. Read verse 14 with me. It says, which, talking about the spirit of promise at the end of chapter, verse 13, Ephesians chapter 1. <coughs> end of verse 13. It says that Holy Spirit of promise, verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Yeah. You know what that word earnest means? You go buy a house. You want to put some money down on it? It's earnest money. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is the earnest 
yeah. of our inheritance. Amen. He gave us just enough to get there. Amen. Right. Right. Some people says that you can tell how much gas is in the tank by the honky horn. You get what I'm saying? Oh, boy, he shouted the house down well. That doesn't mean anything. Right. Right. We've all got the same bunch, don't we? Yeah. I got the same shots you got. Yeah. But well, it says to be filled, like you're going to pull up to the pump, give me five more. No. What that means is to live your life in such a way that you cleared up that the Holy Spirit can work through you. Amen. Don't forget Amen. it. He gave us a down payment. Amen. He's determined some things. They forgot this. Yeah. They forgot this. Also what they forgot in chapter 2, that they were dead. Yeah. Read what it says in verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead. Right. I believe sometimes we forget just where we come from. Right, right. I'm not going down there to uh, uh, talk to those people. I'm not, he's an old drunk. So what? He might need the Lord. That's right. Man. Huh? Amen. Amen. You want to know the difference between you and him? It ain't nothing you done. Yeah. Right. I had faith. Well, obviously you ain't read Romans 12. Yeah. It says Romans 12 verse 3 that he gives every man a measure of faith. That's right. Whenever he digs through and sees that measure of faith that's the size of a grain of mustard seed, you know what really happened in there? The Lord's digging through all your faith that you've mustered up yourself. I got faith my truck's going to start. Yeah. I've got faith whenever I get home that my dogs ain't run off. Yeah. I've got faith my, my wife ain't going to cheat on me. That, listen, that ain't God-like faith that we're talking about. That's right. The faith that you have to get saved is that the Lord digs through and finds that grain of mustard seed and the Word of God in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Verse 14, the Word was made flesh. That Word goes in and hits that faith. And the Bible says now faith is the substance of things That's hoped right. for and the evidence yeah, of things not seen. It's not tomorrow faith. It's not yesterday faith. It's now faith. Yeah. And the only way that faith can be alive is whenever a living God comes by and blows on you then His Word comes by and it gets on you and then you can be born again. Amen. And that's why the Bible says that a fool says in his heart there is no God. You want to know why? Because every living breathing soul has a measure of faith inside of them that God has put there and God and listen with Without that, you couldn't be saved. Amen. 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 And don't forget. Amen. I'll tell you what happened. You forget that you were dead. Yeah. You'll think you're better than everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, brother. And also, then I'm done. <coughs> I like what Paul said to the Corinthians. He says, "No, you not that the unrighteous." shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's a question. There's a question mark, right? He said, be not deceived. Yeah. <coughs> so somebody's trying to tell them differently. That's right. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves, of mankind, nor thieves, or covenants, or drunkards, or revilers, or extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Right. I can see them, O Corinthians, just like you. Now, I'm, I'm going to hurry up. I know the kids are getting fussed. I've been long tonight. I ain't trying to be. But this is important. God sent me up here with this. Amen. 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 Good for it. Amen. I could see them Corinthians saying, I'm not a drunk. I'm not a fornicator. I, I'm not an extortioner. I'm not a reviler. Yeah. I, I can, I'm not effeminate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we do that being Baptist? <laughs> Looks like we're taking third grade pictures. <laughs> I'm not like you, sinner boy. But you don't know how Paul finished that verse up? He says, as such were some of you. Don't ever forget you was dead. You was dead, now alive. And I like verse 4 in chapter 2 because that's when you get delivered, amen. 
Don't you forget about being delivered. Yeah. The Bible says but. Yeah. Whenever that word comes across, that means things are about to change. Amen. Yeah. It says but God, uh, who is rich in mercy, uh, yeah. for His great love wherewith He loved yeah. us, uh, even when we were dead uh, in sins, uh, hath quickened us together with Christ. Uh, by grace you're saved. Yeah. Uh, I'm here tonight to declare to you, letter by Baptist Church and I apologize for taking so much time. I apologize for the slip up. But I'm here to tell you tonight if you don't forget God has determined some things. If you don't forget to give you a down payment. If you don't forget that you were dead. And you don't forget that you're delivered. I'll tell you what He'll do. He'll send many people your way that'll be saved. Listen. Listen, it won't be like Ephesus and say, I have somewhat against you. Yeah. You've left your first love. Amen. 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 I've given you my heart. Yeah. It's okay with your invitation. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Good Amen. Good Amen. 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 What happened at Ephesus, you say it'll never happen to me. You put it on your home. Yeah. It'll happen at your home, too. That's right. Amen. You show me a place, you show me a home where Christ ain't being preached, and you'll see a bunch of unruly kids. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Yeah, man. You show me a home where Christ ain't being preached, you'll like, you'll see a group of people that don't understand their position in the home. Right. Yeah. yeah. You'll see people. You'll see, listen, and it almost always ends in divorce. Yeah. Yeah. Moms wonder why their teenage daughters sometimes back talk them and go on and so forth. But whenever their husband leaves the kitchen, they huff and blow, roll their eyes. Well, oh boy, don't die on me. <laughs> we'll go over to Ephesians 4 yeah. and 5 and we'll just study a little bit about the rules of the home if you yeah. want to. Amen. Uh huh? Yeah. Do it all the way or don't do it at all, honey. Yeah. That's what was wrong with Ephesus. Right. They were all about their performance. You're all about your shout. They were all about their practice. Yeah. Uh, all this and everything that's going on. Uh, but they forgot. Uh, they lost their passion. Amen. How about you tonight? Yeah. Everybody stand. It's okay with your invitation. Yes, yes, Everybody stand. Amen. Is there anybody that all want to come pray? Oh, How many people know somebody lost tonight? Yes, sir. Yes. You don't want them to go to hell when you right. come. Right. What's your passion? Thank you.